But I want to get back to these markets. It's the biggest story in U.S. trading history right now. The S&P 500 on pace to break an all-time record on Wednesday, the longest-running bull market ever. And it seems only, the, really, the only thing or maybe the only person uh, that can derail this market would be the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell. And just moments ago, President Trump telling Reuters that he is, quote, not thrilled with the Fed or Powell for all the raising of rates that they've already done. Here now to discuss Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, Hal Lambert, founder of Point Bridge Capital, and Steve Dudash, president of IHT Wealth Management. Hey, Hal, let me start with you. Uh, president Trump really, listen, he's, he's upset. I think every president gets upset when the Federal Reserve goes against them and, you know, could derail their economies. We even saw once where uh, Federal Reserve might have even cost a president an election. Having said that, though, is that your only concern? Because I really think right now the only thing that can stop this juggernaut of the stock market is the Fed. You know, I think you're right. I mean, this, this booming Trump economy is something that, you know, Facebook and Twitter just can't censor, can they? They can't censor people's 401k plans. They can't censor their IRA statements. They can't talk it down. So, sir, sure, President Trump is, is concerned about the Fed being over-anxious on these Fed rate hikes, and he should be. Look, what he does, he's not going to let what happened to George H.W. Bush, what Greenspan did to him. And he threw us into a recession. George H.W. Bush's approval ratings were 90% in January of election year, and he lost the election because we went into a recession. So we're 20, the, well, the problem is he's looking at the two and the 10-year spread. It's about 25 basis points. So why would the Fed continue to raise rates and people are projecting another 1% next year on top of 50 basis points more this year, that's going to put an inverted yield curve, and we know what happens then. So, of course, he's concerned right. about it. Okay, you know, Steve, there's no doubt that, uh, uh, that these Fed, all these Fed chairmen uh, understand history. They, they, they're very loath not to interfere, particularly if there's political implications. But by the same token, sure. President Trump can take it as a compliment that the Fed has to do something uh, to sort of temper the, this runaway economy. Right. Well, exactly, Charles. And to the last uh, guess um, point, when are you going to raise rates? I mean, right now we're at really low um, uh, unemployment. Markets are doing really well. Economy is doing really well. When is the perfect time to raise rates, if not now? I'm not saying I want higher rates. I hate higher rates. We all do. Anyone who owns a business or is part of it, you know, it drags on the economy. But at some point, you need to reload that gun for when the next problem comes and we have some uh, ammunition to take care of it or at least cushion the blow a little bit. So if you're not going to raise it now, my humble question would be, when do you do it? Because I don't think there's a better chance. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I think you're going to have to raise rates just because I think the bigger issue is going to be inflation. And we haven't seen a lot yet, yeah, but it's definitely starting to right. kick in. And anecdotally, I mean, every business owner well, I talk to. What about folks who are saying that the Fed is taking action now so that they have ammunition later on? I mean, I don't like that. I mean, if that's yeah. what they're going to do. Listen, Janet Yellen, she, when she raised rates the first time, I thought she was trying to send a message to Wall Street. You guys can't kick me around. Yeah. Well, guess what? The market collapsed into January of that year. The first two weeks of January were the worst ever in history for a January market. She learned her lesson pretty quickly. So if the Fed yeah. does do it for the wrong reasons, and whether it's yeah. to, to have uh, some more quivers, arrows in their quiver or, or any sort of, you know, it, but, but Powell isn't your classically trained economist, right? He is a Wall Street guy. He's got to know this. He's got to know that, but I think they're looking very closely at the inflation data. That's, that's been the story the whole way through, and I think they see inflation, but there they're going to raise rates. There's not inflation. It's there's starting to creep in. Wages there's a lot, are starting to go up. It's starting to happen. Coming. It's all coming. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. Look, inflation. Uh, good, good, uh, uh, Hal. I'm sorry. They're, look, they're, they're saying there's signs of inflation. We've got to get ahead of it. There's not signs of inflation. It's 2.4 percent. Yes, potentially raise, uh, uh, there's going to be a, a hike in, in, in raises to, to the employees, but that, that can be offset by productivity. So until the, the bond market's pretty smart. There's trillions of dollars going into the bond market, and the 10 years sitting at around 285. So that's telling you something right, right there, and they're not worried about inflation. I, I don't want to spend the whole segment on the Fed, but I will ask you this, Steve. You know, earlier yeah. this year, the January job number came out on February 2nd. The Dow was off 666 yeah. points because, because uh, the median uh, wage hike was 2.9%. When Main Street hears right. that Wall Street doesn't want them to even have a 3% raise, they get crazy. I mean, it, this is the same group that got the $3.5 trillion in phantom money printed up, a trillion-dollar bailout. Uh, the, the government looked the other way while they did all of these nasty things to Main Street, and now the Fed would like to derail or slow the economy because Main Street may get a 3% raise? 
No, it's not about them having a 3% raise. And I'll be honest with you, when the markets went down, and I think I was on your show about that time, we were telling people to buy into that dip because that was an artificial thing that people were overreacting to completely. So that's when you take advantage of emotions getting ahead of themselves. But the fact of the matter is, Energy prices are higher, wages are going up slowly, yeah. but they are starting to go up right now. And I know no one wants to hear me say this, but the reality of tariffs, they do drive up pricing to some degree. I'm taking the politics out of this, just the, ma the math behind it. Tariffs are going to be a little bit higher, so therefore inflation is going to be a little bit higher. Yes, productivity is going through the roof. Yes, we are probably going to be able to grow our way out of some of this. But to be it is a little naive to say there's no inflation going on right now. Well, let's talk about this. Whole let's talk the about whole point. Yeah, because yeah. this sorry, economy, no, I'm let's, sorry, Charles. let's bring politics into it for a moment, guys, because, listen, ultimately, yeah. in my mind, this economy is going to be hard to ignore. Uh, you know, I know the media doesn't talk about it a lot, particularly maybe this week if the stock market hits new highs. Uh, we'll talk about it, uh, you know, in a few things. Maybe it might even make a few headlines. But one thing that caught my attention today, and I'll start with you on this, Ryan, real clear yeah. politics. The, uh, the right direction, wrong track. Right direction is at 40.5%. It sounds low, right? That's the highest level since December of 2012. And to, what it says to me is that people are begrudgingly starting to allow themselves to believe again. But it also suggests a lot of room to the upside. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's so much evidence that we've got a lot of room to the upside. I mean, I just, you know, as it, looking at the market specifically is you just have to look at valuation. You know, the market's at a, almost a record high right now and valuations are cheaper than they were at the beginning of the year. So I, I have to think there's a lot of room to move in the economy and in the market as well. Hal, uh, on Friday, Deere reported they have a lot of exposure overseas into China. The stock was initially off five, per, five points, came back five. This morning, SD Lauder reported sales in America only up 2%, their largest, more mature market. Uh, Europe is a juggernaut for them. Asia Pacific up like 26, 30%. So it suggests to me that although tariffs are making these headlines, I don't know that it's having an impact to the sense that, hey, the folks in China are, are, are boycotting SD Lauder products. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very interesting. In fact, the earnings overseas have been better than the earnings in the U.S. for these international companies. And earnings are up almost 25% for the quarter year over year. So it's been an amazing earnings run. Revenues are up. We've had 79% of companies beat uh, earnings estimates and 72% of beat on revenues. So it's, it's definitely booming, and it's booming. But, you know, what's also interesting is, yes, yeah, we talk about tariffs, the dollars rallied. So it's actually brought down pricing overseas because the cost in dollars is less.